Hey what's up, I'm PGL and oh my god, this event was filled with fun. Okay, so the entire event was filled with this new softwares and also some hardwares, you know. These all just updates on their hardwares, their Apple Silicon, oh, spoiler alert by the way. And, you know, like their new software updates, that sort of stuff. And let's go order like Apple. So yeah, let's get right in. The first update is on the iOS 16. So this is the new update. And this is kind of like Android, you know, like Apple without just making it too obvious. They just took it from Android. They just changed just a bit, but no hide or anything. It's actually pretty nice, you know. So now you have multiple fonts, filters and widgets to use on your lock screen. You just need to tap and hold to enter the edit mode. I don't know whether it, does it need to be locked or does it need to be unlocked using your face ID. So yeah, but if it is need to be locked or if it, need, it just works just straight away, whether it is just locked, it just will be terrible because anyone could just edit anything. But I think it will be just still on the, like you just need to unlock it, but not just swipe in to go to your home screen, that good sort of stuff. But if not, then why there is no lock icon, you know, like it's unlocked or something like that. I think this VFX that just done really good. So yeah, let me know. What do you think? Is it VFX or just, you know, like the pre-built version of the new software? You can also switch between lock screen, which if you don't understand, on Windows, you can create multiple desktops on different wallpapers with, with different icon arrangements, all of those stuff. But you can just use it for different use cases. For gaming, you can just choose another desktop, you know, using a shortcut key, something like that. But for the lock screen, you can now also do the, that type of stuff on your lock screen on your iPhone, which is really nice, you know. Well, how about the notification? You can customize these widgets, you know, like add widgets, add the new fonts to your like lock screen. The time will just show on the like a new font or something like that. But if you had notification, it will just cover up, right? But Apple did something that is really nice. I actually like it. So you can now hide the notifications and the notification hide down here, which is really nice touch, you know, like it won't cover up your lock screen, like the wallpaper, you know, like the font or something like that. It's, it's actually a really nice touch. And the messages have now have three most requested features, which is now you can edit when you make a typo. Don't worry, it will just still show if it's being edited or not. So yeah, for those who just received the message can see that whether this is edited or not. The second one is you can undo send, which I think is really useful for the users. Finally, you can now mark any thread as unread so you can continue reading it later if you have any like important work to do. Oh, the share play. Do you remember that? I just totally forgot about that feature. but. So the share play also now has an update. It is compatible with more apps and the feature dictation that I don't think more people will just use it. But this is more fun now. I never used dictation for anything important or even just doing something. But for longer messages, this is now more useful. So the keyboard will be still usable so that if you had any problems that you want to change, you can do it without exiting the dictation mode, the microphone mode that will show the waveforms and sort of things like that, right? Now you just don't need to like get out or exit from that mode. You can just easily type it, which is really useful. Thank you, Apple. It's, it's actually, you know, like as I always say, really good. So the live tech feature is now usable on videos. Oh my God. Thank you, Apple. You can now you like, copy codes, you know, like copy commands, which is really useful. Also, more apps can support this feature using the new API. And there was more, but this is uh, just like interesting stuff that is just from this event. I'm just covering those stuff that are interesting. As you, if you just follow my channel for a long time, you know, I will just cover up the things that is interesting for me. So I just skipped quite a few parts on this event. So if you want to know more about it, 
go watch the event. Fine, let's speed run this part. So let's talk about the watchOS. As short as possible, new phases to choose, a refreshed Siri UI, new banner notifications, and the health app related stuff, which I'm not interested to talk about on this video. Oh, now we are in the fun part. And the also interesting part. Oh, oh, what is that? That's actually wrong, you know? So, okay, fine. So, new Macs and a new next gen Apple Silicon. It is known as the M2. Yeah, it, it makes sense. So, the chip is slightly bigger. Okay, so the chip has slightly bigger die size. I don't know why it's just talk like this. Then the M1, it has 20 billion transistors, which is 25% more than the M1. 100 gigabits per second of unified memory bandwidth, which is 50% more than M1. They enables 24 gigabytes of unified memory, total 8 cores, which is for high performance cores and for high efficiency cost, the M2 delivers 18% more performance using the same power as the M1, which is so impressive. How about it's compared to like the PC like chips? So the 10 core PC laptop chip is defeated by M2 using less power but giving nearly two times the performance. The 12 core Laptop chip also defeated by delivering nearly 90% of its peak performance in a more quieter and thin laptop with using the M2 chip. So the M2 has 10 core GPU which performs 25% higher and 35% higher at its peak on graphics. The neural engine can process up to 15.8 trillion operations per second. And the media engine on this M2 has a higher bandwidth video decoder that supports 8K H.264 and HEVC videos, which is really good. Alright, let's start for the first hardware that uses this M2 chip. The all new MacBook Air is the first to use this chip. So it has an all aluminum unibody enclosure. This is just 11.3 millimeter thin and comes in four colors silver space gray starlight and midnight the magsafe is also here with color coded cables wow looks so good and nice two thunderbolt ports and a audio jack with higher impedance headphone support the display is 13.6 inch which is 0.6 inch bigger than 13 inch macbook pros and stuff so it has 500 nits of peak brightness which is not that bright but okay whatever it's it's brighter than the last gen 1 billion color display support which is really nice 1080p webcam and the microphones plus speakers are up at the keyboard which you can look at here speaking of keyboard it features touch id and a force touch trackpad this performs five times more than the Intel Air and the like 25% more than the previous MacBook Air. So yeah, I'm just talking about the performance. So how about the battery life? So it has 18 hours of video playbacks and all day battery life at the last year, but you can just easily kill it in a day if you're just doing heavy workloads. The power adapter has two USB-C ports to charge more devices. If you're wondering, it is 67 watts. Also, another Mac that powers this M2 chip is the MacBook Pro that also has this new chip with fan, which is presumably good for thermals and the performance and just small upgrades to it. So yeah, I will end the video here because this video is already kind of too long, you know. So yeah, let's meet you guys on the part two. Yeah, I'll meet you there.